Pretty, yes. <laughs> when did you have your first contact with medieval music and how was the development uh, to that project now? That's a long story and I'd rather not talk about it now. Okay, it started probably around about 1974. I was very interested in medieval music as done by uh, Tillman Sassato. And um, I would often play this type of music in the house. And I never thought I'd really be playing this type of music until about four years ago, five years ago, when Candace and I, I would be playing the music around the house just as a hobby. But it wasn't until Candace started singing it that I really got into it from a, a playing point of view. Although I must admit that about 10 years ago, I was in a castle in Germany, of all places. And I met um, a group of musicians, disguised Arts of Halfen. I think that's how you say it. And um, they were playing medieval music, and I was very taken by that kind of style. So that really gave me the spark that started the fire, which is now really consuming me completely, as far as medieval music goes. So it's... It basically started 30 years ago, then 10 years ago I was reintroduced to it again. And I think it was almost like a, a prod to from someone saying, come on, get on with it, and do something. And I was getting a little bit tired of rock and roll. Not of playing, just of the whole surroundings of rock and roll. The, doing the, the touring and the people involved in the rock and roll showbiz. It was all a little bit too show business. I wanted to get back to the simple times, go back to the woods build a tree house.
before I met Richie. Never. But um, the interesting part of that is that instead of um, instead of just hearing it and it bringing me back centuries ago, where I think that does that with him, it originally, when he first introduced me to it, um, Richie and I had started seeing each other about eight years ago. And I would come up to his house around Christmas time, and it would be beautiful, big, beautiful English Tudor house, a lot of dark wood. And me being very American, I didn't ever see something like this before. Usually the houses are all plaster. But um, he always had all of this beautiful antique kind of furniture. And, and everything that I remember about that time was put to the medieval music, because he would constantly be playing that around the house. So originally, when I first started thinking Renaissance or medieval music, it reminded me of those wonderful times that we first had back in the house that we first met and first started getting to know each other. So that was really what the, um, the connection was for me. That's why it really soul stirred me yes. originally, right? It's true, true. faith in the fans because I know they have a lot of musical taste we weren't appealing to the um, the fads of the day um, most of my fans have been around nearly as long as I have and I thought that there were probably a lot of them being their 30s 40s even 50s and I, I thought they, they would appreciate the music because it has I think it has a certain class to it and taste and I think it's very good 
it has some great melodies and, and some pretty good guitar playing. It wasn't like I was going off doing something totally different. To me, all I was doing was, was really coming out with melodies that were similar to something I'd done in Rainbow, but without being hard rock. But I did have a lot, a lot of faith in the fans that would follow it, because um, it's not that far removed at all. So I, was, uh, I wasn't too nervous about that. Uh, some people said, how, how could you do this? And it's like, well, it's, it's very similar to hard rock. It's just played much quieter. It really is. And also you have to go not blowing my own trumpet, because I played it as well. But um, it's, it's a question of, I really like the music. I think it stands up on its own. And I'm very pleased and proud about it. And I, when you know you have something that's really good, you can't wait to give it to the, the fans and the public and say, listen to this, what do you think? It wasn't like I was thinking, oh, hmm, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I knew I was doing the right thing because I felt one has to only believe in oneself. At the end of the day, maybe one person will tell you something is black, another one will tell you it's white. You'll go crazy listening to everyone. So at the end of the day, I can only listen to myself. And I felt totally moved by this music. I feel very strongly about it. And I love playing it. I love listening to it. On the last album that we did on Shadow of the Moon, it was basically Richie would write the tune and then I would write the lyrics over that. That was the process that we used. Um, I think it might change on the next album, though, because there's a song that I had written by myself, words and music also, that he seems to like very much, which is a big compliment for me because he's so critical, um, which is a song called Now and Then, and he wants to put it on the next album. That'll be the first... 
um, song that I'd written the music and the lyrics on that's been out there. Usually the process is he'll come up with a song and he'll play it to me and say, here, see what you can do with this. And he'll hum the melody over the top of it that I sing and I'll just write the words into that. So that's what we do. I used to write music was to always write it in the studio at the last moment, which caused quite a few problems. Time consuming, and it was the pressure was on, and you couldn't really think about the music that you were going to play. But uh, we have some, I think, very good tunes written for the next LP. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. We Are you? perform one of the tunes in the oh. We perform one of the tunes in concert now, um, a song called Under the Violet Moon. And that seems to get a great response, don't you think? Yes, it does. It's, um, it, it's, it's a song about. Would you like to explain? She wrote most of the lyrics on that, and that's his first lyrical um, part that he did, contributed. Yeah. For some reason, I, what I was trying to do was, when we wrote that song about six months ago, I was trying to write down all the things I thought it suggested to me, to Candice. It's, it's basically like Renaissance fairs and fire eaters and... Um, and we have people that are, are on magical bridges and fortune tellers. fortune tellers. And I was just writing down all these key words. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll write down just a few verses to give Candice an idea of what I want. But once I'd written it down, I thought, oh, well, that's not bad. Yeah, I wrote a bit more, <laughs> which I never do. And then when Candy saw it, she said, uh, well, that's very good. Let's leave it as it is. I'm like, okay. Because I don't like to intimidate uh, or inhibit a singer, that's their realm. It's like someone saying to me, I want you to play this F sharp here, or this riff, and that confines me into playing in, in such a way that I, I want total freedom <coughs> in the music, unless it's a really good idea. But uh, and I always respect a singer's angle, which is, that's their realm. I, I usually leave that to them. Even if I have ideas of what to say, I try not to kind of mention it because that's up to them.
has a beautiful voice and my family is very musical I was always brought up around a lot of um, well I, I started playing piano when I was very young I was classically trained my brother started taking saxophone lessons so he was always playing the saxophone my sister took um, flute lessons both my parents play piano and everybody in the whole family sings so <laughs> it's always been very musical very musical experience for me all through growing up so yes I think I think you have to say everybody I get the bottom drawer. So it's the largest drawer. So. Oh, I know what they say. Oh. Okay, I'm just... That's the Kansas stuff. Can you believe that? Wow. That's Jimmy Page. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> boots are Jimmy Hendrix. <laughs> the boots are a little bit uh, boots. <laughs> and these are my boots. <laughs> well, a low, a low heel for me. Not outside of the bedroom. Right? Oh, come here, boots. <laughs> and a braid. And his foot grew away. Courtesy of the guy Swasa Kaufman. And it's very easy to be around in many ways, even when we go on the road. Something that impresses me a lot about her, apart from her singing and, and her lyric writing, is a very small thing that she, she has one bag, which women never travel with one bag. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. And that in itself is... <laughs> Yeah. 
But there are many things I would like to say about Candice. She's an incredible singer, and the way she picks up tunes, she's very quick, very... In a way, she's much more um, of a musician than I am. I'm, I practice a lot. She doesn't practice as much, but she has much more... Of, her hearing is much more acute than, than mine is. She's much more um, in tune with... She's much more intelligent with picking up a melody than I would be. I feel a melody and I play and practice, but she just listens to what I'm doing and glides straight in. That's very refreshing to hear someone just sing immediately what you want them to sing. I don't have to go through hours of knocking down walls and trying to come to some sort of vocal that will fit over what I'm playing. that I never realized that I wanted to come true in the first place. I think my first obligation to Richie was to be there for him as a friend and to be more supportive more than anything else. And then when we slowly evolved with this project, um, relationship-wise and musically, that became the dream come true. Everything together was the dream come true. It wasn't just that we got together and this was what I wanted to do was sing for a band. I never thought about that before. But singing around the house and him slowly bringing me into it, now I'm more comfortable and more used to it. And now it, I'm looking back and realizing that, yes, this is really a dream come true for me. Yeah, you guys can see it tonight. It's like there's a lot of friendly faces in the audience. And refreshments are served. <laughs> and new faces. Who's that? 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 <laughs> and it was run by a 
the evil wizard. <laughs> and he wrote wonderful magical tunes. <laughs> and this is one of them. <laughs>
is not difficult. He knows what he wants. These rehearsals for Blackmore's Night were very, were very relaxed. They were because he loves this music. He has a real passion for it. And that passion has rubbed off on everybody else in the band. And you can't help but, you know, hear the CD and it just is a, a you walk away listening to it and you walk away from it and you feel good about the whole thing. So that translated into rehearsals. So bubble. It's silly, but it's like a little bubble that we get in together when we sing together. Um, it's just perfect because our voices are very similar, but yet they're different enough. You know, they have qualities that make us different enough. So when we sing together, um, it can sound like one person or not, you know? So, and Kenny's great. She's, she's one of my favorite singers, honestly, you know? I love, I still listen to the CD at home, even when we've practiced for hours, you know. I'll go home and I'd still listen to the CD just because I enjoy it so much between what she's playing, the songs themselves, and Candy's voice, you know. So, it's great. <laughs> Thank you. 
Richie, do uh, castles and medieval sceneries play an important role in your life? Yes, they do. It, it would seem that way. Uh, I stay at enough of them, especially in Germany. I love the place that we're in now. Ramersdorf is a great place. Um, it's something about the, the architecture. That there's a feeling of fullness here. I think it's also with, with some of these castles, I, I pick up a kind of a feeling of that some of the musicians from the old days, even probably Bach's, Beethoven's, and people that really had something to say about music probably stayed at some of these castles. And the history here, you can't help but be overwhelmed with it. And um, it, it, it's, it's hard to explain. Again, music to me is all feel. And when I, I go to a castle, I feel there's a purity in the air that hasn't been distorted by society up to date. They bypass it to go down to the office yeah. down the road, which is a place... If I'm in a castle, I can breathe easier. I feel better. I might maybe fantasize or just... I live life more to the fullest. As opposed to going to... Uh, a recording studio or an office where I feel very, um, I don't know, very thwarted, confined. Um, I feel, I, I, I feel like um, it was almost a feeling of, um, what's the word, claustrophobic, almost in offices and studios. So that's why quite often I'll go to a, a castle to, to make records. There's room to be melodic, there's room to be rhythmic, you know, and um, what else can a bass player ask for? You know, usually a bass player is stuck with the basic stuff, you know, and, and in this case I got the opportunity to do a lot.
At first, I didn't think it would work. But now, I think the fans, the fans that have been with us for a long time, look forward to the end as a kind of the cherry on the top. That's the dessert of the meal. And the people that are like the quiet parts, they just kind of stay in their seats and sit back, whereas the others come forward and get crazy. So I think, in a strange way, it does work. I'm amazed that it does work. It is a strange sight to see people um, liking something as slow as memming and so, so quiet as that. And then if we did something like Black Knight, Lion on Silver Mountain, they still... They're still into that. It's it's an amazing sight to see. It's so weird. And to me, it's uh, I never quite get over it. When we play it, um, I'm almost expecting some of the people that are there for the, the quiet songs to leave, but they never seem to. They seem to enjoy the quiet stuff, which we play for probably an hour and 20 minutes. We do the quiet Renaissance music. Then we take a break, a big, quick break, and our encores are all rock and roll. And uh, it's unbelievable, but it actually works. And people seem to be very happy with it. because there's a freedom in playing rock and roll at the end. Once I've got the Renaissance music out of my system of playing for an hour and 15, 20 minutes, I want to play something not quite so rigid and set that I can just let loose on. Because Renaissance music is quite rigid in parts. It's very set and there's a construction to it that you can't really leave too much. You can't improvise too much in Renaissance music. It's just that the music and the melodies that are laid down are such fantastic melodies that you have to adhere to those melodies more than improvisation. Whereas rock and roll is the opposite. You don't have the melodic content. It's all down to extemporization. It's always been medieval music and Renaissance music is very close to rock and roll. It's played in fourths and fifths, a lot of it. Like, for instance, Smoke on the Water is played in fourths, which is very similar to how the music was, some of the harmony in those days was written in the 1500s by the Cromhorns and such. So it's not that far removed, it's very similar. <laughs>
poster. They always put these posters up where we play. They never put them up around town. So people when we're actually playing in the place, they know we're playing. So that's good, isn't it? things are going forward because I was very skeptical, not skeptical, I was very nervous of taking this on the road because um, the music is so quiet and I thought that I don't want to let my fans down that I already have. Um, I want them to enjoy what we're doing but I don't want them to be put off. I don't want it to become a music lesson because someone can go to a classical concert and see a music lesson. This had to be a, a little bit of a party atmosphere and something that would move the soul, transcend people into a majestic world, could be carried away here. And um, so I think the way we're going is we're, we're taking it step by step.
41 km 700 
was done, she turned to run, dancing to the setting sun as he watched her. Bring 
Through the street 